this tier list. And in the following order, they go the best, elite, very good, doing well, quality pocket passers, let's see, hot seat, rookies, and quality backups. Now, I think it only makes sense for us to start at the top and make our way down. So, starting off with our first tier in this tier list, we have the best quarterback in the NFL. Now, there's only one quarterback in this tier, and that would be Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, his resume stands for itself. He has three Super Bowl championships now. He's won the MVP multiple times. He is the most valuable player in the league. He is the best player in the league. You know, just, you can never really bet against him. Year in and year out, he has gone and he has won. And truly, the only man that has fully stopped Patrick Mahomes was Tom Brady. And Tom Brady is out of the league. So, until further notice, it is the Patrick Mahomes show, and we all are here to bear witness. Number two, moving into our second tier, which is the elite quarterbacks. I have three quarterbacks listed in this tier list, in this tier, and they are all AFC quarterbacks, believe it or not. So, first up, we have the MVP himself from the last season, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson is the best dual threat quarterback in the league, you know, very elusive on his feet. I can go, break away, run, and he's extremely shifty, can juke anyone. I would hate to try and tackle this guy in the open field. And on the other hand, it's not just his rushing ability that has won him these MVP awards. He is a phenomenal passer as well. And when you look at the cores that he does it with, it's very impressive. Because, yeah, last year he did get save flowers added to his group, but it's guys like Rashad Bateman, uh, Nelson Aguilar. It's not phenomenal wide receiver one talents like you would think he is, he is throwing to. Yes, his tight end Mark Andrews is very good, but Mark Andrews was also out for a lot of last season, and he was doing it with a backfield of Gus Edwards, Keaton Mitchell. So, all things considered, the fact that Lamar Jackson has been able to lead his team to as much success as they've had in the regular season, winning 13-14 seed in multiple years, and uh, yeah, putting up the numbers that he has, it's very impressive, and I do think that he is an elite quarterback. Next up, we have the Bills quarterback, Josh Allen. Josh Allen is another phenomenal dual threat quarterback. He can pick it up and run with it, and he's just a big-bodied guy. He's hard to tackle, coming in at six foot six. He really doesn't protect his body all that much, because he is like a battery Uh, 
almost and absolutely obliterated us. So when uh, he's firing on all cylinders, this guy is pretty much unstoppable. And yeah, just very, very good elite quarterback. And then finally, the third and final quarterback in the elite tier is Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow. We didn't get to see him a lot last year. We didn't see him a ton in his freshman year here in the NFL, but the years that he has been healthy and playing for the Bengals the entire season, they have done very well. And even in his young career, though he is not super young by, you know, athlete standards at this point, uh, he still has made the Super Bowl already, and he brought the Bengals to a level of success that they had not seen in quite a while. As good as they were in the Andy Dalton days, they were sometimes running with the top of the pack, you know, some season way back, I feel like I remember the Bengals being 8-0 in the AJ Green, Andy Dalton era, but even then they could not win that playoff game and under Joe Burrow, he has like some of the most playoff wins already for them, so the future is bright with him, I do think that when he is healthy and playing football for the Cincinnati Bengals, he is the biggest threat to Patrick Mahomes no other quarterback has really put up as much of a fight outside of Tom Brady, who bested him both times in the playoffs. I, I do truly think that Joe Burrow is Patrick Mahomes' greatest rival at the moment. Everyone else, like, yeah, you could say that Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson are better quarterbacks than Joe Burrow, but Joe Burrow has been the one to actually beat Mahomes in a couple of different instances, and even in the playoffs, coming down from behind and beating him. So, he does have that attribute to him, and we have to respect it. So, elite quarterback, and that rounds out all three. I think that is it for the elite quarterbacks in the league. After that, we move into the third tier, and this is the very good quarterbacks. Now, I am not saying that these guys cannot be in the elite conversation, but I don't think they're quite on the same level, and I think it would take at least one more year of really good play for me to rope them in with the former tier that I just described. So, first up in the very good quarterback uh, tier, I've got Jalen Hurts.
guess a top So the fourth and final quarterback in the very good category 
CMC uh, Lamar Jackson he was in that convo I, I want to say like weeks 13, 14, 15 eventually it being trimmed down to CMC and then Lamar but I, I think that Dak Prescott plays winning football we saw him come out in his rookie year and immediately make an impact on the Cowboys Tony Romo went down I don't think anyone expected them to do well that year but between Zeke and Dak they did very well they made the playoffs and since then when Dak has been healthy they've been a playoff quality team and I think if you have a quarterback consistently keeping you in playoff reach then that is pretty great it's honestly on the organization to try and build up the other pieces figure out what is stopping them from getting over the hump I don't know if that is Dak Prescott or if it's other parts of the team I honestly couldn't tell you it's it's hard to say. I feel like the Cowboys could be more successful than they have been, and it's just they get unlucky. They they choke a little bit. Uh, any year that they say that it's their year, I think just based on history, we know that it's not, but there's nothing really stopping them from doing it. They have the talent on both sides of the ball to accomplish everything that they want to. It just doesn't happen. Um, yeah, but at the end of the day, I think that Dak is a good quarterback, and if I'm the Cowboys, I don't, I don't see a situation where I get a quarterback that is going to make a higher impact than Dak, and keep you in the Super Bowl picture more than him. Like, if there are any Cowboys fans out there that are calling for Trey Lance to be started, I would drug test them. Uh, if you think that drafting a quarterback is a better option, then you have to be committing to a rebuild. I think for winning now, he is a guy that you can win with. You just haven't yet. I mean, you've won a lot of regular season games. It's just, it hasn't really translated to the playoffs, but it's that way for a lot of people in their careers. So I say stick with him. Keep riding the, drag, the Dak Prescott train and see where it ends up. I... I feel like if I was a Cowboys fan, I would not be upset if I had five more years of deck. Alright, so with that, we have successfully completed our top three tiers in the tier list, and now we get to move into tier number four, and this is our doing well tier. Uh, when I say doing well, I mean that I think that these quarterbacks had a great season last year. They're being viewed in a positive light, but I think that that could change. Um, so first up in our doing well tier is Tua Tagovailoa. Tua, you know, coming out of college into the NFL, he had a bit of an injury. He had a big injury that people were worried about. I think based on his college play. Everyone was very excited about him. I personally was very excited about him. I was hoping that the Patriots could somehow trade up and draft him. Um, and when he ended up coming into the league and he took over, there are a couple more injuries here and there to deal with. Um, his play at first, it was promising, but what we saw, I feel like he's taken steps in the right direction year in and year out. We had him play a bit, and then play a bit more, and play a bit more, and last year was the first year that we could actually see a full season of just Tua playing, uh, and nothing else, and it was good, he, he played really well, he had like, uh, nearly 30 touchdowns, I think double digit interceptions, but put up the most passing yards of any quarterback in the league, and I think that he dismissed any concerns about his arm strength. People were saying that he's not strong, he's making bad throws, he can't get the ball downfield to Jalen Model nor Tyreek Hill, and I think he put those claims to rest. Um, now, as a quarterback, do I personally fear to a Tango, Tango Bailoa if I'm an opposing team? No. I think that the skill position group is far scarier than Tua himself. Tua can make some really cool passes, but I think the people surrounding him are also just very talented. Um, Tyree 
Joe just got voted best player in the NFL, and he is extremely fast. Jalen Waddle is extremely fast. You got Devon Achan, um, also a speedster. Raheem Mostert's top speed is very quick as well. So when you factor in all these things, I think that the Dolphins have just put Tua in a good place to succeed, and he is succeeding. And right now, things are all unhappy. But if another concussion happens, or if Tyreek Hill were to go down, I don't know what level of success Tua would have. I think that right now he is doing well. He got that contract. He is riding high, and hopefully they can continue at the same pace that we've seen. But I'm not ready to move him into the very good conversation. I've seen one good year out of him, but I've also seen I've seen concerns with his health. I've seen things that are not as good. So, given his history, uh, I just want to see one more good, complete good year out of him. And I will consider moving him further up. But I'm comfortable with him just in a doing well category. Because I think that he could have a bad season and people would be questioning if he deserves all that money. I think there are already people questioning if he deserves all that money because it's a crazy amount of money. But, yeah, I, I don't think that he had anything last year that I, like, other than his ability to play in the cold. Yeah, he also is not very good in the cold. I think to, uh, in, in games that deep off at a degree of, like, 40 and lower, I don't think he's won a single one. I don't remember if that's a two individual slat or if that's a Dolphins as a whole stat, but that team cannot play in the cold, and that's not really his fault. That's more on their preparation, but yeah, two is doing well. Then these next two guys might be a bit more controversial, but second in the doing well category, I've got Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy. set the franchise record for the 49ers in passing yards, was legitimately in the MVP conversation for stretches of the year. And I think it's less about the fact that Brock Purdy played well, and it's more about is it Brock Purdy or is it the team? Like, the team was winning, and I think that is in large part because Brock Purdy was playing good football. But could you put another quarterback in there and have them play very well? We don't know. That is something that we cannot answer. And we've only seen one year of Brock Purdy fully at the quarterback position uh, for the 49ers. And they had a great year. They made the Super Bowl. They had multiple guys have very good years. And I don't think that... I don't think that Brock Purdy is a system quarterback. But we've also only seen one year of him doing this well and now we're gonna have no Brandon Ayuk and so I want to see how he does with one less weapon and another year within the 49ers organization and with that if he continues to have 4,000 yards 30 plus touchdowns I'm very happy to put him in a very good category I mean where he's ranked right now it's still technically puts him in the top 10 quarterbacks of the league, and I do think that he is, like, in that top 10 conversation, but I, I want to see more out of him before putting him in the honor. I think right now we can just say he had a great year, he's doing well, and it's to be continued. And that continue, that sentiment continues into our third and final quarterback in the doing well category, and that is Jordan Love. Jordan Love started off the season last year. It was okay. It was okay. He was figuring it out. He's been riding on the bench behind Aaron Rodgers for all those years. They, they spent a very high draft pick on him, the Packers did, and they've been training him up. They finally have the opportunity to hand the keys over to him. And really, I don't know if anyone knew what to expect. We hadn't seen anything out of him. There was no way of knowing, like, are the, are the Packers competitive enough? to make the playoffs, is this going to work out? Is it going to be a bunch of years down the drain? And after year one, especially the second half of year one, I feel like we have seen that, like, okay, Jordan 
was, can be a very good quarterback. He can make the game-winning plays. He can throw the ball well. He looks good. But the sample size is so small. He turned it up in the second half of the season last year. He did play a good first playoff game. But I don't think we can take what we have seen of Jordan Love and put him any further than where he is at this level. I think he is like fringe top 10 at best. Uh, I think that he has that dual playmaking ability. I don't think that his season was bad by any means. I think that his season is right there with like and Brock when you look at the numbers but the first half was shaky the first half was a bit shaky and it got a lot better in the second half but I just like Brock Purdy I want to see one more year of this same level if he can do that again a little more consistently into this next year then we can move him up in terms of like contracts I think that they had to lock him up he was he played well enough his agents did a great job. They locked him up for $55 million a year. Does he realistically deserve that? No, he doesn't. But has he done? He led you to nine wins. Nine wins does not deserve $55 million. That is not... That is not intelligent. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that the decision to pay him the max after just one year is one that I agree with. But... I don't think that he can't fulfill that contract. I don't think that, like, I think we can look back and think, yeah, it ended up panning out right now in this moment. Does it make sense? It really fringes on how the next season goes or next four seasons go. But yeah, I think that he is doing well. If he does not have a good season next year, it is going to be a bad look. Like, obviously, I hope that he does do well, but he is making a lot of money, and you guys had nine wins. If you regress by two wins, and he just, for some reason, plays worse, now you're in a bad situation. So, we'll see how that works out for the Packers. Okay. After that, we move into our fourth quarterback category. Our, sorry, our fifth, our fifth quarterback tier in this tier list. And this is the quality pocket passers. Now these are guys that can throw the ball very well from within, within the pocket. And I think that they can win you a lot of games. They are dedicated to winning. They are going to give you a lot of passing yards through the year. And they can they play good football. But they don't really have any rushing upside whatsoever. So it's just... A step above a game manager basically they're talented quarterbacks that only stay within the quarterback the, the pocket so first in this category is Matthew Stafford Matthew Stafford you know is getting up there with his age two years ago dealt with a lot of injuries the Rams completely fell apart at their first losing season under Sean McVay then last year he came back uh, in the games that he was back he looks solid, um, and when he's healthy, I think that when he's healthy, he can throw the ball very well. He can put up 300 yards in the game. He can throw for three touchdowns. He doesn't have any rushing upside whatsoever, but they won a Super Bowl under him, and if he is healthy, you can win a Super Bowl with him. Uh, and I, as a Lions fan, as long as he still looks as sharp as he did last year and two years ago, I would be fine to have him on my team. I think that he is a very quality pocket passer, as the tier states. And I certainly think that anyone in this tier and the tiers above this is someone that you can run the Super Bowl with if they're playing their best game. Then, number two. Uh, maybe, maybe I hold off on that comment. Number two is Kirk Cousins of the Atlanta Falcons. Kirk 
years ago, I think Kirk did a good job of undoing them when the Vikings went like 13 and 4. They had a really good season. They came from behind and won a lot of games. And Kirk has Hall of Fame legend level agents. Like, he has made so much money for the lack of postseason success that he has had in his career. But yet, in the regular season, he plays well enough. Like, I think that. He can win a playoff game. We haven't seen it, but uh, is is pretty good from the pocket, like Kirk Cousins. I feel like there are a decent number of teams that would like him. You know, there was that time where people were saying, "Oh, if the 49ers had Kirk Cousins instead of Jimmy Garoppolo, they would have won all these Super Bowls." I don't know if that's true. I don't know if we can stretch it to that limit, but Kirk is, like, above average. He is a guy that can throw the ball well. He can get it to where he needs it to be. There's a reason why Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs, Justin Jefferson, all these guys had their amazing wide receiver years with Kirk Cousins as their quarterback. And you can say the exact same about Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup's Triple Crown, Megatron's, you know, uh, receiving record. All of those happened with Matthew Stafford at the helm. Kirk Cousins has been responsible for a lot of very good wide receiver seasons on the Vikings. So, if you take it all the way back to his Redskins days, then it's... I feel like he was he was decent. I don't think that he was, like, phenomenal. I think that on the Vikings, he did do a lot of great things, but they never saw any postseason success. Now with Atlanta, it's really about his health. What what does he look like when he comes back from that Achilles injury? Um, if he's the same Kirk that he's had, then I think Atlanta's offense is going to be much improved because Tyler Heineke, Desmond Ritter is not any comparison to Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is by far a better quarterback option, so I would be hopeful if I was an Atlanta fan, but I'm just going to have to see. And then at the third quarterback in this tier, Jared Goff is a guy that kind of got written off after his stint in L.A. Number one overall draft pick, performed well, was part of the reason why the Rams were able to go to the Super Bowl, lost in an embarrassing fashion against the Patriots, then maybe used as a scapegoat, you know, Todd Gurley cut, uh, Matthew Stafford gets traded for Jared Goff. Jared Goff is sent to the Lions. The Lions early on are not doing well. The Rams immediately win a Super Bowl. So it's kind of not the brightest of moments for Jared Goff. But he battled through it. He persevered. Led the Lions to their best season in like 40 years. Uh, and then scored a big contract. And I feel like they're doing that to show respect. To show like, yeah, we rock with you. Because he really have a very nice season, and I think that, like, when it's said and done, he doesn't provide anything in the rushing game, but you can win with, win with him. We saw him go to the Super Bowl with the Rams. This Lions team was not that far away from the Super Bowl again. You can certainly win with Jared Goff as your starting quarterback, and he can play very good football. And yeah, I, I would be happy to have him. I would be happy to have him if the Lions, I think that the Lions are riding high on him. And the fourth and final quarterback in the quality pocket passers tier is Aaron Rodgers of the New York Jets. Now, there are two sides to this argument. People who would agree with this ranking and people who would say, how does that make any sense? How can you have Aaron Rodgers next to Jared Goff and Kirk Cousins when he has won a Super Bowl? He is one of the most clutch players in NFL history, uh, he has the best touchdown to interception ratio of any quarterback ever, and he has four MVPs, which is by far the most in the league. And to that, I I cannot dispute any of those facts. Those are all true. When you're just talking from a talent standpoint, Aaron Rodgers is leagues above Matthew Stafford, Kirk Cousins, and Jared Goff. 
and that's not even a diss on Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford is nice, but we're talking about Aaron Rodgers here. People have him in their top five. And, like, the only reason he is this far down on this list is because I don't know what version of Aaron Rodgers we're going to see next year. Aaron Rodgers won back-to-back -back MVPs with the Packers later in his career. Like, say his age 36, 37 year, unprecedented. You know, to be that good back-to-back -back years immediately after they drafted Jordan Love, go to the NFC Championship game both times. Then, the Packers, they trade away Devontae Adams to the Raiders. Now, Aaron Rodgers has the worst year of his career, which is not bad by any means. But if we're just looking at it from a passer rating standpoint, since being a starter, that was Rodgers' worst year. He did not get to 4,000 yards. I think it was 26 and 12 in that year, which is not a bad interception ratio, but for his standards, it is kind of bad. And then he was supposed to have a change of pace, go to New York, get a breath of fresh air. Maybe we see him be very good once again. Three plays into the season, tears his Achilles. Aaron Rodgers is now 40 years old, is coming off not a bad season, but one of his worst seasons, and off an injury, a major injury that not all quarterbacks can bounce back from all that well. I don't know what his ceiling is. If he somehow can get back to the old player that he was, that is phenomenal. I would instantly jump him back up to the very good category. But is it realistic for me to say he can do that? I don't know. That is not something I could say. Uh, and obviously he has no rushing value at this age and his current physique, especially off a major injury like that. I think that for the time being, I'm happy with putting him in just a quality pocket passer area. I think that it is very reasonable to keep him outside of the top 10. And at the same time, some of the quarterbacks that I'm going to list below him, I feel like this is a good spot for Aaron Rodgers. I think that this is realistic. I think we can easily compare the season he's going to have to a Kirk Cousins, a Jared Goff, or a Matthew Stafford. Anyone higher up on the list probably will have a better season than him. And I think that for Aaron to pick up here, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the league, like in the world for the Jets if Aaron Rodgers can even play at this level next year. It can win a playoff game. That is enough to win a playoff game. Jared Goff just did it. Matthew Stafford a couple years ago did it. Kirk has not done it, but this is definitely a good enough play to have success, especially with their defense. So I would not be worried at all. It's ten times better than Zach Wilson or whatever mess they've been riding with for the last 15 years. I would still be hopeful as a Jets fan.
just uh, injuries, setbacks here and there. The Browns kind of used him as a scapegoat and got rid of him. And from then, it was rough. Uh, we saw him on Carolina. It wasn't great. Did not look the best on Carolina. Then it was floating around as a backup. Won a game as a backup on the Rams. But it was truly unknown where Baker Mayfield's career lied. I felt like he had a great rookie year. And I felt like in the year that the Browns made the playoffs, he did play very well. And I wanted to see him get another chance. And he got that with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year. He came into a situation where at the beginning of the season, it was rumored that he was in a quarterback competition with Kyle Trask. Like, obviously you're following in the footsteps of Brady. Expectations are going to be low. People were not expecting them to make the playoffs by any means. But he came in, he did well, led them to the playoffs, and had a very solid season. And with that, I think he definitely has earned his starting spot. secure a starting spot on this team for now. I don't think that long term the Buccaneers are going to rely on him as their future. Uh, I think that it's nice to see him revive his career like this but it's not I don't think that people are necessarily expecting him to repeat a playoff appearance they had a good year and he did well enough and I think he is going to coast on being just good enough and really all I can say is let's see how he does this year I feel like one bad year the fan base will turn on him another good year and people will say that he's an underrated quarterback but I don't think that he's realistically moving up this tier list I think that he is an exciting exciting guy. I like I like him. I like Baker Mayfield as a player, as a person. Uh, the moxie that he gives your team, I think he's very fun to root for, and I do wish him success, but he is he is a bit inconsistent. Uh, he can play poorly, and so is just in this let's see category. Let me turn off my Discord notifications. Sorry about that. Next up, now this one, I'll have to do some explaining, but it is Trevor Lawrence of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence, year one, you know, rookie year, obviously you come into one of the worst teams in the league, it's going to be rough, it's going to be rough, you had Urban Meyer as your coach, overwhelm, bad situation, then you go out, you go get Doug Peterson, Peterson you make uh, improvements to the offseason. Trevor Lawrence makes a very good step forward, plays very well. They win a playoff game. Everyone is high on him. Everyone is like, ah, he is the future. He looks great. Then kind of takes a step back this year. Does not play as well. Did regress a bit. The team started off strong. Completely imploded towards the end of the year. Missed the playoffs. And I hate to say it, but he was playing in one of the easiest divisions of football. Like, going into that year, I don't think anyone thought the Jaguars weren't winning that division. You had the Texans, number two pick in the draft. You've got the Colts, who are taking, I think, at number three. Um, and, the, like, these are rookie quarter quarterbacks. No one is expecting these teams to be good whatsoever. You have the Titans that are running with Will Levis, um, Malik... Neighbors. No, no, Malik Neighbors. What is his name? Malik Cunningham. Whatever that other quarterback was for the Titans. Uh, but yeah, I think like the entire division was in shambles except for the Jaguars. I think the only team really projected to make the playoffs out of that division was the Jaguars. And so, for you to not make it and have CJ Stroud kind of propel to the top of this division you're going to have to fight for that spot back. Uh, and now Trevor Lawrence just signed a $55 million deal extension. Uh, and I 
I've seen towards the end of last year, people are making those Daniel Jones comparisons. They have pulled up the stats, they're putting them side by side, and they're like, look at Daniel Jones's career starts, and then look at Trevor Lawrence's career starts. So the narrative has already started to shift on him. If Trevor Lawrence has another bad year, or like a year that does not meet the expectations, if they do not make the playoffs, or are not in competition to make the playoffs, it is going to be an uncomfortable conversation. People are, I'm not going to say that it's his fault, but we need Trevor to go back to how he's playing in his sophomore year to relieve the tensions of everyone. I think it is very concerning that the Jaguars did not win their division last year. And it's not a trend that you want to see. Trevor Lawrence was, like, supposed to be fantastic. And year one, he wasn't going to come in and make an immediate impact. Year two, it looked like it. Year three was a letdown. And if year four is a letdown as well, things will get dicey for him. And that is why I think that this is honestly not a bad spot for him. Going into last year, I did think that he was in that like conversation of like, oh, he's next up. Oh, he's going to be good. But he did not have the season I thought he was going to have. I thought that Calvin Ridley being added to that offense, they were going to be even better than they were. And that was not the case. Connection with Calvin Ridley wasn't that good. They just lost Calvin Ridley. Um, you have to see how they perform. But it really is a let's see situation. I think that this, it's not like a make or break year by any means, but it is going to matter in the eye of the fan base. I think that this year matters quite a bit. So, let's see. Then, moving into the third quarterback in the let's see tier, I've got Geno Smith. Uh, Geno Smith, kind of a similar situation, you could say. Uh, started off, he's kind of like Baker Mayfield blended with Trevor Lawrence, uh, in terms of like, getting passed around, written off, uh, coming back, reviving his career, and then taking a step forward and then taking a step backward. Uh, Gino, two years ago, I think, like, the league adored him. His story was just so easy to root for. Gino Smith, in New York, it didn't work out, then served as a backup here and there. Entering that year with Seattle, I think people fully were expecting Drew Locke to make the start. I was expecting Drew Locke to make the start. When Drew Locke lost a quarterback battle, I was like, geez, what is going on with Drew Locke? And then Gino came out and he was bawling, dropped some great quotes, uh, and genuinely was playing at like a Pro Bowl level. Um, let the Seahawks this let the Seahawks to the playoffs. And then last year, Shane Waldron just like There's a reason why Shane Waldron is gone, and we've got Grubb coming in. Grubb did great things with the Washington offense in college. If he can implement a more high-flying passing offense within Seattle, and if Geno Smith is able to deliver, I think that the fan base will be very high on him. Uh, I think that there are a lot of Geno defenders. I don't think that anyone is writing this off on Geno, but I think that the expectation is laid that they had a good year two years ago. Last year was a bit of a down year. Like, not even that bad. They they barely missed the playoffs, and I think people are okay with that. But I do think that the Seattle Seahawks are supposed to be right around playoff contention, and if this offensive coordinator change does not push them into that category, the finger is going to be blamed at Geno Smith. And Geno is old, and so people will be looking for the face of the franchise. If Dino cannot deliver here and now, he is too old to continue riding forever. He has had, like, decent success, but way too late in his career. So, let's see. Then, fourth in the let's see category, we've got Deshaun Watson of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, in Deshaun Watson, it's just like, it's truly one of those stories of why, why would you, why would you do something like that? Uh, the accusations, I don't know. There's no way I could possibly know the accusations. If he actually did it, if he actually did not do it, I know that 
certain places he was not convicted. I know that he wasn't made out to be guilty, but for that many people to come out against him and say something that negative, like, are they really all exploiting him, or did the guy act poorly? And he did admit to having sexual relations with one of his uh, masseuse, mas massagers, and so I don't think it's all that far-fetched that he does ask for sexual favors, and maybe it just... Maybe some people are backtracking on what was something consensual, and maybe he is a freak. I don't know. All that aside, let's just talk about his football. On the Texans, dude was a beast. He came into the league, lit it on fire, got hurt. I think people were really high on Deshaun Watson for a while. And then all of that happened. He had the Texans consistently as a playoff team. In the time that he was there, they were like, kind of close to taking down the Chiefs in that one game, like Deshaun Watson's peaking right there in those first one and a half quarters of the Texans-Chiefs game. And then in like 10 minutes, the Chiefs completely make it up. Then we see the downfall of the Texans. Deshaun Watson gets traded to the Browns for the most unbelievable hole. And since being with the Browns, what has he really done? He's done nothing. When he has played, he's been fine. Like, fine is the best I can say. I don't think that he has been that good. I don't think he has been horrible. I think he's been better than some of the other options. But, uh, but like, bro is unable to play a full season. We have not seen him play a full season in a Cleveland Browns uniform. And I think the only reason he is in the wet seat and not in the hot seat is because so much to get him. You invested so much money in him. You invested so many assets. Like, you can't give up on him after everything that you did to get him. You are forced to ride it out. And it truly is let's see because the Browns, they outperformed expectations last year. They, with Deshaun Watson on the sidelines and Joe Flacco stepping in, got to 11 wins, they had one of the best defenses, made the playoffs, they look good, and so if Deshaun Watson can come in and keep them at that level, or elevate them, I think that people will be just fine with them, I don't think that anyone will be all that worried, I think they'll be like, okay, we're kind of in contention, we're fine with this, if he cannot recreate the place that Joe Flacco left the team off at, they're kind of just stuck in a place where Deshaun Watson, you should not have traded all that for him, you should not have signed him to that contract, but you were forced to write it out because there's absolutely no way anyone else is going to take him, and it's just like, you, f you messed up. And that was the risk the Cleveland Browns were willing to take, and so far it has not panned out in their favor, and we'll have to see if it ever does. But then, at number five in the Let's See category, we've got Kyler Murray. Now, Kyler Murray, I truly think, can be much higher on this list. Uh, we just need to see another healthy season from him. Kyler Murray is small, he is undersized, um, but he plays very well. I do think that he's a good dual threat quarterback. He's not big at all, he's, but he's speedy. He can pick up yards on the ground, and as passer, he's pretty adequate. Um, Kyler Murray, I, if I was a Cardinal, I'm not asking for him to be replaced at the moment, but I want for him to be, like, ranked with other good quarterbacks again. I think we have to see a good season from him again. Uh, and, you know, he went down two years ago, and then last year he came back. He had some good games, but he also had some, like, iffy ones, and so I just need to see him season from Kyler Murray again, and I, I think I am biased towards Kyler Murray just because I had him in fan fantasy a couple years ago, I think he was my quarterback one, and I won in fantasy that year, and so in my mind, he's great, <laughs> he's like, I have a soft spot for him in my heart, I think that Kyler Murray he'll go out, he'll show everyone that, like, he is like that, he is going to bring the Cardinals back into the winning category, but, like, realistically,
stick with it. The Cardinals are the worst team in their division. Even though they'll be better with him, I don't know what their ceiling is. Uh, and then, eventually, you have to do something. Uh, I don't, I don't think that he is the problem, but I don't think, I don't foresee the Cardinals doing well. And it puts them kind of at a weird spot. If they're not doing well, but he's putting up good numbers, then I think he's, they're good to keep him for a while because he's not the issue. But if, let's say they have a really bad year and Kyler Murray does not play well, they might give him the Justin Fields treatment. So, we'll see. And then finally, the sixth and final quarterback in the Let's See category. I think he's very different from anyone else in here. Uh, this is Anthony Richardson. I fully believe that Anthony Richardson will have a good season, but we saw him play two games, so there's really nothing I can say. Uh, I'm not going to group him with the rookies, because he's not a rookie. He played two games in his rookie year, and then he got hurt, so we have a small sample size. I think he's living off that Jimmy Garoppolo hype, you know, uh, when Jimmy Garoppolo was on the Patriots. The Patriots played him for four games when Brady was suspended. Everyone was like, whoa, this guy... Oh, no, no, they didn't even play him for four games. They played him for two games. Yeah, and I think it was the third game where he got hurt. No, 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 sorry, I need to, it's all slowly coming back to me. They played him, he played really good for like six quarters, and then he got injured. And then in game three, Jacoby Brissett made the start against the Texans, and they still won that game. Then in the fourth game, they, I think, got shut out by the Bills because Jacoby Brissett also got injured. But in those six quarters, maybe seven quarters that Jimmy Garoppolo was playing, he looked great. And I think that's exactly what we are seeing with Anthony Richardson. In the two games that we saw last year, the Colts were super competitive. He looked great. And it's just hard to gauge because the sample size was so small. So by default, I have to put him in a let's see category. I think that he could be way higher. I would love to put him right up there with Jordan Love, but he needs to actually have a good season to be amongst the ranks of guys like that. Uh, in terms of potential, yeah, he has a lot of potential as a dual threat quarterback, but we just will see. And then our seventh category, our seventh tier in this tier list is the hot seat. And the hot seat tier is quarterbacks that it feels like their their employment is riding on this season. Um, just they did not do that well last year, and if they continue to play poorly, it's over for them. I think for sure they will get canned. Uh, so first up, <laughs> this one is a little bit unfair, but I do have Bryce Young in this category. Um, it's just like with everyone in the let's see category, they play well at least at some point. There was no point in Bryce Young's rookie tenure where he played well. It felt like, I think that like at his best he played maybe average. I don't think he had a game where I was like, oh yeah, that was a good game from Bryce Young. They, they really won because of him. They trailed him like every second of every game. Now they've brought in Canales and he is the quarterback whisperer. So, and they brought in Deontay Johnson. Xavier Leggett, Jonathan Brooks, all these things to help Bryce Young succeed, and I truly believe he'll be much better this year. I don't think that he is at risk of losing his job because I think that he is going to outperform what he did last year, but if he's somehow, with all these improvements, if he somehow manages to be just as bad as he was last year, I think the entire fan base is going to be extremely upset because the Panthers traded up to go get this guy and he has been a huge disappointment for two years in a row and let's face it like quarterbacks don't get the same grace period that they used to you have like two maybe three years before you get kicked to the curb and so it really depends if the Panthers somehow manage to be the worst team in the league once again I think Bryce Young would be traded and I think that they would look for something else but let's hope that doesn't happen then number two in the hot seat category this one is pretty obvious this is Daniel Jones Daniel Jones of the New York Giants Danny times you know he's had an up and down career he's been good at times bad at times two years ago he had a very solid season very 
to hear they had a very bad season and his play wasn't that good at all and they had to get rid of Saquon Barkley directly because of him because Saquon wanted more money and the organization chose to play to pay Daniel Jones over Saquon and over other people and that decision might haunt them and in Hard Knocks itself we have heard Joe Shawn Joe Shane Sean, I don't know how to say his name, uh, has been very blunt about it. They either have Danny play well this year, or they will have to consider him pivoting. He's either going to go back to how he was doing, and this is a proof of year for him. There's no other way to put it. This is a proof of year. If he cannot get it done, if he cannot show them that he can be a good quarterback, I think it's over. I think that they will fully try and find someone else for this team, and they almost did it. They almost went out and got J.J. McCarthy. So, or was it Jaden Daniels? I don't know. They tried to trade up. They tried to trade up, and they failed. And I think that Daniel Jones is absolutely on the hot seat, and if he does not deliver, it is going to be very grim for him. Number three, very obvious, Russell Wilson of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Russell Wilson is playing on veteran minimum. He's competing for starting quarterback with Justin Fields. Now, I think that he is in the lead of that competition, but uh, Justin Fields has been looking good at camp. I think Justin Fields is younger. I think he has more upside. I think that right now, Russell Wilson is the better quarterback, but Justin Fields isn't that bad. And if you're trying to build your franchise up, you probably do want your younger quarterback on the field as soon as you can. So you can train him and develop him, and if you're not going to compete this season, you may as well just have a good year of rebuild. And Justin Fields is the quarterback for the rebuild, so Russell Wilson, we'll see. I feel like the Steelers will probably roll out with him as the starting quarterback, and I don't even know if he makes it to the end of the season. If he starts playing bad, they are going to be quick to bench him. I don't think that he has any, like any leash, really. He has to play well, otherwise he's not making it into next year. Uh, and yeah. Then fifth in the hot seat uh, quarterback discussion is Derek Carr of the New Orleans Saints. Derek Carr always been like average to above average. On his time with the Raiders, there was that one year that they made the playoffs, and he had a good year, but he got injured, and he couldn't even play in their playoff game. And yeah, he's always just been, like, middle of the pack, uh, and he can throw for 4,000 yards, he can be good at times, I feel like he does have some come-from-behind victories, but also, last year was his chance to prove that it was the Raiders and not him reason for the lack of success. I feel like things were really lined up for him to do well, and he did not. He went into a very easy situation. You had Bryce Young, rookie Bryce Young. You had Baker Mayfield battling with Kyle Trask. And then you had Desmond Ritter and Tyler Heineke. And in a division with all of that, you couldn't win. Uh, so it's like kind of like Trevor Lawrence, except way worse, because you, like, you went out and you paid this guy thinking that he'd be able to do better. He has all this experience. Uh, and he's old, so there's no reason not to move on from him. So if Derek Carr does not do well for the Saints team this year, then get rid of him. Fully just get rid of him. Draft a quarterback. Rebuild. Because if you can't compete with him, you certainly can't keep compete with You just have to rebuild. I don't see why they would waste their time. They already didn't make the playoffs. If they don't make the playoffs again, I think that you can maybe give him one more year, but like he's certainly on the hot seat, and he is going to be on his way out soon if he doesn't have a good year. And Will Levis is the last one in this category, the fifth and final quarterback in the hot seat tier. Uh, Will Levis serving as the quarterback for the Tennessee Titans. Had a great start. His first start last year was great. He had threw for four touchdowns, a bunch of yards. He's got a cannon for an arm. Uh, takes lots of shots down the field, but he's wildly inaccurate. He throws a lot of uncatchable balls. He was very inconsistent to straight up bad after his first game last year. And so the Titans, they went out, they got a lot of pass 
had DeAndre Hopkins. Then they went out and they got Tony Pollard. They've revamped the defense, gotten a lot of defensive pieces. Uh, and if Will Levis is lined up to have his breakout season, if he does not break out, he's going down as a Davis Mills. I, I mean, Davis Mills was never given a chance to succeed, really. But in my mind, this guy is kind of getting the hype that Davis Mills was getting as well. Where when you looked at his rookie year stats and everything compared to the other rookies, it was like, oh, actually, Davis Mills was sneakily one of the best rookies. And I think people are saying a similar thing about Will Levis. Not that he was one of the best, but like, oh, in these categories, he's good. He's primed to do well. I, I really believe in Will Levis. I personally don't know if I'm on board with that. I do think that Will Levis is not the future in Tennessee. I think that they've lined him up to succeed. If he succeeds, I'll be surprised. I would be surprised. I, I'm not counting on him doing well, really. I think that the Titans are firmly in last place. I think that they're within the bottom four teams of the AFC. And I would love to see him prove me wrong, but Will Levis, I think, is going to, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, he's going to go out there. He's not going to do well. The Titans are going to realize he is not their quarterback, and they're going to go get someone else. That's what I expect to happen. Now, we move into our eighth category. This is the rookies. Uh, four rookies here in this category. I... Yeah, there's no point in me ranking a rookie amongst other people. Ranking, ranking based on potential doesn't really make sense when everyone else has played in the NFL and these guys haven't. So we've got our four rookies. Um, being Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, and Bo Nix. Now, in terms of prospects, who I like the most, I'll be honest, I like Jaden Daniels the most. I think that Jaden Daniels, what he did at LSU, uh, between the rushing and the passing, winning the Heisman, I think that he is really good. I really like Jaden Daniels' skill set and the way that he plays. Uh, he was listed as the quarterback one. I think that he comes with a lot less of the drama that Caleb Williams does. Um, not to say that Caleb Williams, Caleb Williams is dramatic, but uh, if you were to compare Caleb Williams and Noah Lyles, I don't think that a lot of people would not be able to make the parallel. Like, I think that Caleb Williams has talked himself up and has done a lot of things, and there's a reason for why he talks the way that he does, but we have to see him back it up. If he can back it up, then there's no issues. He can talk his stuff. But if Caleb Williams does not go out there and have a good season, <laughs> oh boy. Where's Jaden Daniels? I think that pressure on him to succeed is a little bit less. Uh, I think that he is going to have a good season. Like, Caleb Williams should have a good season. Everything is set up so well for him. Jaden Daniels, I like his skill set, and I genuinely think that he will have a good season. Um, rushing and passing, as long as he can stay healthy, he is on the thinner side. If he stays healthy, I feel like he's going to have a very promising first year to his career. Not that they're going to win many games or anything, but I feel like they have good pass catchers in Dotson and McLaurin. They have Brian Robinson. They've got Austin Eckler. I think that they're still running with Logan Thomas. I don't 100% remember if he retired or not. They also got Luke McCaffrey. Uh, all these guys, I feel like. He doesn't, like, need to have success, but I'm very optimistic that he will be successful. I think that he will have a great year. Caleb Williams, I think, like, the need for him to do well is higher because you traded away Justin Fields. You went pretty hard. You went pretty hard in last offseason. You went even harder on this offseason. You really set up a lot of things for Caleb Williams to be successful. You dropped Justin Fields, and, you know, that was a big discussion. Should they roll out with him? Should they not roll out with him? Ultimately, you went to go draft this guy, and if this guy does not do better than Justin Fields, or if Justin Fields somehow doesn't 
does better with the Steelers. Boy, it's gonna be ugly. So I think that the Bears need him to do well. Now, do I think that he can do well? Yes. Do I think that he will do well? I I don't have any thoughts really. I think that the Bears are hard to predict any time that they have done well. I think that they're going to do better the next year and it doesn't happen. Like last year I thought that the Bears would make a jump. They didn't really well I not good enough to keep Justin Fields still employed, uh, and yeah, the year with the, that they had Mitch Trubisky and they made the playoffs. The next year they did a lot worse than I was expecting. So the Bears, I I don't really want to risk projecting how they're gonna do. Uh, and then with Drake May and Bo Nix, they're entering pretty bad situations. Like Denver, I think, has left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouth with the way that they handled. The Wilson situation, um, very up and down year, started off pretty poor, uh, then they really made a resurgence, almost made the playoffs, they're right in that bubble area, then couldn't do it, Benjamin Wilson, and yeah, I feel like they're in a bad spot, and Bo Nix is entering a situation where like, there's not a ton of talent, uh, running back wise, Javante Williams and a bunch of random dudes. Wide receiver wise, you have Cortland Sutton, but outside of Cortland Sutton, it's like Marvin Mims. Uh, I think their best tight end is still Albert O. Uh, yeah, it's it's not a great situation to be in. I think they drafted Troy Frank Franklin to pair with Bonix from Oregon, but yeah, not great. And then. Unfortunately, a similar thing with the Patriots. The Patriots last year, their offensive skill group was really bad. Um, you know, putting up zero points against the Chargers, losing 600 to Chargers, and then losing against the Jets in the last game. And these are games that, like, in the past they wouldn't have lost, but, like, they were truly that bad on offense, even when they had brought back um, Bill O'Brien. And, yeah, you go and you get a quarterback is a guy who, even though he has a potential, he's never played in the NFL, and you already were one of the worst offensively skilled positions, so you have a bunch of question marks, you brought in a bunch of rookies, we have to see how the rookies do, I don't think anyone's expecting them to have right off the bat success though, uh, and if they bring in Brin and Ayuk, that would be great, I don't think it moves us anywhere in the division, I think we're still in last place. But to go out and get a true wide receiver one with all the new changes, like, it would show that we've fully left the Bill Belichick era and we're doing things differently. If we go out, we get Brandon that you would give him, like, a top five deal in terms of wide receiver contract money. Uh, we're setting ourselves up for the future in a major way, and it's not the same old, same old of, like, oh, let's go get a wide receiver and then you go get absolutely no one. I think we got KJ Osborne. Is that really our wide receiver move of the offseason? Yeah, you drafted a couple guys, but it's like every year we say that there's a problem with the offense and then we just don't address it. So if we actually address it, we're doing Drake May a huge favor and putting him in a significantly better spot to develop as a young quarterback. And finally, we move into our last tier. This is the ninth and final tier in our tier list. There's only one quarterback in this category. This is the quality backup quarter category. Uh, and this is Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew, one way or another, is going to win the quarterback battle in Las Vegas. I think that he is better than Aiden O'Connell easily. And for, for times in Jacksonville, for times on the Colts, and then going for it on the Raiders, I think guy that like can play very decent football but he's not someone that you hand your franchise over to. I think that he has a very solid backup that you only want to play when necessary and he's not your answer. Um, he really is in this quarterback battle with Aiden O'Connell. I think Aiden O'Connell is supposed to have like the Will Levis treatment where it's like year two you're gearing up to give it to him but in Will Levis's case, I think that they're actually going to give that to him, whereas for the Raiders, I fully see them benching Aiden O'Connell because he is not as good as Gardner Minshew. And then Gardner Minshew finishing out the year. The Raiders, I can see them being anything between, like, horrible and mid... Like, I could see them winning eight games. I could also see them winning, like, four games. That is truly what I think of the Raiders, I think that it makes more sense to do poor 
Sanders. That'd be exciting. That'd be exciting for your fan base. I think that Antonio Pierce, good head coaching hire. He went with the right guy this time. Didn't make the same mistake as Rich Bisaccia and Josh McDaniels. can't win with what you have right now. Aiden O'Connell is not going to give you winning football from what I've seen. Um, and so you need to get your quarterback. And whether that's in the offseason or in the draft, this is just a filler year. Um, and yeah, Gardner Minshew, I think, top tier backup. He is really the only backup that's going to be starting this year, though. Uh, like, I think in the long run, he's going to be the only backup that is playing majority of the season. Jacoby Brissett, while he is listed at the top of the ditch of the depth chart, uh, Bo Nix, I think he's third. I think Jared Stidham is listed as one. I think... Oh, I totally forgot. J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy is supposed to be in the rookie category. Uh, J.J. is an interesting case because I... I've heard such conflicting things from his camp. I honestly think that it's possible that the Vikings roll out with uh, Sam Darnold and actually play Sam Darnold majority of the season. JJ, I feel like he is a bit more of a raw prospect. Um, I feel like Drake May and Bo Nix inevitably at some point in the season will take over uh, and play more than whoever they're listed behind. Jared Stidham, you're not going to play him. There's no reason to. And then Jacoby Brissett, he is the most pro-ready. Uh, you might give Drake May a couple games to acclimate and then plug him in, but really you want to, you want to train these guys. There's no point in wasting your time. So, whereas JJ, it might do him well to sit behind Donald for a year. You're not going to do anything with Donald. Like, it's not like you're going to win a ton or anything, but... how firmly they have said that Sam Donald is going to start, and what I've heard about, like, J.J. not being in camp because he wants his guaranteed money, uh, I think that he's the only rookie quarterback that I could fully see not playing the whole year, or, like, maybe one or two games at the end. And so, yeah, if we don't have J.J. on here, and then we have Sam Donald, I think that Sam Donald is also a quality backup. You don't want him starting. He's a backup quarterback type of dude. You can plug him in, maybe he'll do well for one game, but really he's tried in this league and he has failed, and we saw it on the Panthers, we saw it on the Jets. His time is over, he has a backup now. But yeah, that is all, those are all 32 quarterback situations heading into the 2024-2025 NFL season, finally fully recapped. Uh, let me know what you think about this tier list. I... worked on it for a little bit, I guess I could say. I put a decent amount of thought into it, but I'm open to changes. I'm very happy to hear what your opinions are, what you agree with, disagree with, let me know. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching as always. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. Uh, I'll be putting out more videos as the weeks go on for sure, and yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you